Have you ever wanted to be a Pokemon master? Imagine battling with Pikachu or soaring with Charizard. The world of Pokemon is full of adventure and you can hold a piece of that magic in your hand. How? With Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards are more than just pieces of cardboard. They are keys to a world of imagination and competition. But where did these cards come from? And why are they so popular? Let's find out. Pokemon cards first appeared in Japan in 1996. They quickly became a sensation. Kids loved collecting and trading them. But these cards are more than just collectibles. They are used to play a fun and strategic trading card game. But when did this global phenomenon begin? When did Pokemon cards first capture the hearts of fans worldwide? Pokemon cards made their way to the West in 1998. They took the world by storm. Kids and adults alike were captivated by the colorful creatures and the exciting card game. The rest, as they say, is history. Now that we know a bit about their history, let's dive into the different types of Pokemon cards you can find. What kinds of cards are out there waiting to be discovered? There are many different types of Pokemon cards, each with its own unique purpose and role in the game. There are Pokemon cards, of course. These cards are the heart of the game, representing the Pokemon themselves. Each card features a Pokemon with its own set of abilities, strengths and weaknesses. These cards are beautifully illustrated, often showcasing the Pokemon in dynamic poses or unique environments. Collectors and players alike appreciate the artistry and detail that goes into each card. Then there are trainer cards, which give you special abilities during the game. These cards can turn the tide of a battle, providing support, healing or other strategic advantages. Trainer cards are essential for building a well-rounded deck. And finally, there are energy cards, which power up your Pokémon's attacks. Without energy cards, your Pokémon wouldn't be able to perform their powerful moves. These cards come in different types, matching the various Pokémon types in the game. Speaking of different cards, have you ever wondered how rare some Pokémon cards are? The rarity of a card can make it highly desirable among collectors and players. Some cards are printed in limited quantities, making them much harder to find. Some cards are much harder to find than others. Rare cards often feature special holographic designs, unique artwork or powerful abilities that set them apart from more common cards. What makes some cards so special and sought after? It could be their rarity, the popularity of the Pokémon, or the card's effectiveness in gameplay. Collectors often seek out these rare cards to complete their collections or to gain an edge in competitive play. The thrill of discovering a rare card in a pack is a big part of what makes collecting Pokémon cards so exciting. Section 5 The Thrill of the Hunt Unraveling Card Rarity in this section, we will dive deep into the fascinating world of Pokemon card rarities. Whether you're a seasoned collector or a curious newcomer, understanding the different types of card rarities is essential for anyone looking to build a valuable and powerful collection. Pokemon cards come in different rarities. Each card's rarity can significantly impact its value and desirability among collectors and players alike. From the most common cards to the ultra-rare gems, each type has its own unique appeal. Some cards are very common. These common cards are the backbone of any collection and are easily found in booster packs.
They are perfect for beginners who are just starting their journey into the world of Pokemon cards. You can find them easily in booster packs. Opening a booster pack and finding a common card is a frequent occurrence, but it's the thrill of the hunt that keeps collectors coming back for more. Other cards are much rarer. These rare cards are often sought after by collectors due to their limited availability and unique features. They can be harder to find and often require more effort and sometimes a bit of luck to obtain. These cards can be very valuable. Rare cards can fetch high prices in the market, especially if they are in mint condition. Collectors often go to great lengths to protect and preserve these valuable pieces of their collection. The rarest cards are often the most powerful and the most beautiful. Ultra rare cards with their stunning holographic effects and powerful stats are the crown jewels of any collection. They are not only visually appealing, but also highly effective in gameplay. Now that we know about card rarities, let's talk about how to play the game. Understanding the rarity of your cards can give you a strategic advantage in battles. Knowing which cards to use and when can make all the difference in a game. What strategies can you use to become a Pokemon card master? By combining the right mix of common, rare and ultra rare cards, you can create a powerful deck that can outsmart your opponents. Stay tuned as we explore the best strategies to dominate the Pokemon card game. Section 6. Mastering the game. Strategies for success. The Pokemon trading card game is easy to learn but difficult to master. There are many different strategies you can use to win. You need to build a strong deck of cards. And you need to know how to use your cards wisely in battle. With countless strategies to explore, what are some of the most popular and effective approaches players use? Section 7. From casual to competitive, unveiling popular strategies. Some popular strategies involve building a deck around a specific type of Pokemon. Others focus on using trainer cards to disrupt your opponent's plans. The best strategy for you will depend on your playstyle and the cards you have. Pokemon is more than just a card game, it's a global phenomenon. How has Pokemon impacted pop culture and entertained generations? Section 8 A Legacy of Pocket Monsters Pokemon's Impact on Pop Culture Pokemon has had a huge impact on pop culture. Since its inception in the mid-90s, this franchise has grown exponentially, becoming a global phenomenon that transcends age, culture and geography. The Pokemon franchise includes video games, which have sold millions of copies worldwide. These games have not only entertained, but also brought people together fostering a sense of community among players. Anime, which has captivated audiences with its engaging storylines and memorable characters. The manga series has also been a hit, offering fans another medium to enjoy their favorite Pokemon adventures. The toys and merchandise have become collectibles, cherished by fans of all ages. Pokemon has been entertaining fans of all ages for over two decades. From children who grew up with the original games and TV series to new generations discovering the magic of Pokemon, its appeal is truly timeless and its popularity shows no signs of slowing down. Pokemon conventions and events continue to draw massive crowds and new games and merchandise are eagerly anticipated by fans around the world. We've explored the captivating world of Pokemon, delving into its rich history, the various types of cards, and the strategies that players use to succeed. The franchise's influence on pop culture is undeniable, with references appearing in movies, 
TV shows, and even fashion. From its history and card types to strategies and pop culture influence. The evolution of Pokemon over the years is a testament to its enduring appeal and the creativity of its creators. Now it's your turn to share your thoughts. How has Pokemon impacted your life? What are your favorite memories and experiences with this beloved franchise? Join the conversation and let us know. Section nine, join the conversation. Share your thoughts. What are your favorite memories of Pokemon? Do you have a favorite?